Hello, my name is Nikolai Poznikov and in this video I want to give you a demo of an application called Message Crawler. Message Crawler is an application that will convert industry standard dat file to new relativities RSMF file format. It can also take Slack data export and convert that to either a dat file or RSMF file as well. Let me take you to my screen and show you how it works. Here you see a screen of message crawler, so let's perform a simple conversion from a DAT file to RSMF. I'm going to click on import DAT and I'm going to select my DAT file. This would be an industry standard DAT file, a DAT file that you would use to load data into concordance or relativity or to most other applications. This DAT file will contain our delimited field information as well as attachment path or native path and extracted text. Now you can use uh, text of a text message that's either stored in a separate file or that is part of a that file itself. And here we see we do have that message uh, right here as one of the fields. Note few other fields. We have an identifier, which is an ID. It could be a back doc number or control number. And we have a group identifier. This is the field that's going to group our families together. So back attach field will work just fine. In my case, I just have ID and a group ID just so we don't have too many fields on our screen. Other fields I have here is who was the message sent from, to, what time it was sent, and the actual message itself. Now what we want to do is convert these, that file into RSMF file so that we could use it in relativity with all the pretty visualizations, timeline, etc. To do that, we need to select a few options. When you open a DAT file, application will automatically try to figure out what field is which and it will try to map it appropriately. So if we look at the lower section of the screen, you'll see control numbers being assigned to an ID, family identifiers group ID, conversation identifier has been left blank. We'll talk about it in just a second. Uh, message type we have selected, same as body, who message was sent from, what the timestamp is, and so on. So all these fields you can configure and map them to uh, standard RSMF fields. And I'm gonna have a link to those fields in the video description. Also at the end here, we can include other fields that are not supported by RSMF, but you can embed them as an additional fields. For example, ID and a group identifier. Those fields aren't required for RSMF file format, <clears throat> but they could be included if you want to produce and include additional information. So let's go back to conversation identifier. When you create an RSMF file, you can create multiple files so that if you have 100,000 text messages, they're not all loaded as one document. You may want to break them up into uh, meaningful chunks. So what you can do is pick a field that will determine how to break it up. And whenever that field changes, a new file will be created. Now, the better way of doing it though is using a date and time field. So I'm going to select date timestamp field right here. However, I want to apply a format mask. I don't want to create new file anytime that field changes. I want to format it to year, year, month, month, day, day. This way we're going to get a new RSMF file per day. So let's go ahead and check our options. We're going to select our destination folder as a desktop. Export format will be RSMF. Now you can export this into an HTML, which is an experimental feature, uh, JSON only, which is used for troubleshooting and debugging, or you can export it to a DAT file, which in this situation doesn't make sense because we started from a DAT file, but you will see in a few minutes where it may make sense. So let's go ahead and click on generate export and now export is complete. Let's open our desktop folder and we see that two RSMF files were generated. The reason why we have two is because the dates here are 12.4 and if we scroll down, it would be 12.5. So there are only two days that these text messages span. So let's load them into relativity and see how they look there. All right, I skipped ahead and I've processed these files and I put them into relativity. Now, if you put RSMF files into relativity with a new document or a single file upload, they will not look right. So you should not use that feature. I'm gonna show you what happens if you do that. If you just add them as a single file upload, your attachments are going to be missing 
and your families on the bottom right here is going to be empty too. So the file did get loaded, but the content of it did not get extracted. In order to properly load RSMF files to Relativity, you need to use Relativity Processing. And when you do that, you will see that we have our animated GIFs playing right inside the, um, the body of a viewer. We have our images, we can click on them to zoom in. Uh, we have attachments that we can also click on. And on the bottom right, we have our attachments that we can navigate between two as well. And as RSMF file format uh, advertises, you can now navigate between the timeline. Uh, you can see all the senders, recipients on top and so on. And if I just go back to the previous document for a second, I can show you where custom metadata is stored. So the, if you hover over question mark, you'll see that we have an ID, group ID and attachment path. And that information doesn't display anywhere in the body of a message. So the viewer doesn't actually have no place to display it, but you can see it uh, by hovering over question mark here or a conversation here. There's one more thing I want to show you that message crawler does. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to click on import Slack. What message crawler can do, it can take JSON exports from Slack and convert them to either a DAT file or RSMF files. So let me browse to one right now. Okay, here I have a Slack export and it usually comes with multiple JSON files. Integration log is a JSON file that you will always ignore. And the users file is the file that will contain all the users, but it will be loaded automatically. So the only JSON files we need to worry about are either channels JSON, uh, DM, groups, and other JSON files. So you'll need to process them one at a time. However, user files will get loaded automatically to connect the user IDs inside these JSON files. So I'm going to click on open. And now this JSON file will be loaded right here. Next thing you have to do is download attachments, right? Slack does not actually store the attachments with the JSON files. They're stored online and they're not really secured. So when you click on download attachments, they'll just get sucked down from the cloud and saved to your computer. So let me show you how that looks. So I have my Slack data folder that we just looked at. I'm going to move it here. I'm gonna click on download attachments. You can see the count here. It was very quick, but now a folder was created with attachments and all the attachments were saved into this folder. And internally there was a link created like a native link path. So now this application knows where that attachment is. Important note, if you were to close this window and then go back and reopen the JSON, or even if you just reopen the JSON file, uh, that connection will be broken. So you have to click on download attachments again. However, if that attachment was downloaded before, it will not be downloaded again. Just a link will be created. So remember, anytime you click on import Slack to memory, you have to click on download attachments. Now from here, we can take this data into two different directions. One, we can export to that or load to grid. If I click load to grid, it will simply display this data here in the grid and you will use generate export just like we did before. However, for this demo, I'm going to click on export to that. And now it's going to say, how would you like to name it? Call it Slack export.dat, save it. And now I have my dat file here that could be loaded into any review tool that supports dat files, which is every one of them. Now, one more thing to note is before you start creating RSMF files, you should be familiar with the file format, how it works and what information is stored. For that, Relativity has really good documentation, which you can look at. Let me show you a couple of parts that may be interesting. In Relativity short message format section, I'm going to scroll down, and this talks about the actual file, how it's structured. This, these are not the parts that are important. What is important when you select fields for mapping, you would need to select conversation type, whether it's a direct channel um, and what kind of platform that is. So the way it looks, in message crawler is you have a platform type here and you have a drop down over here. So it depends on what data you're converting, you want to select appropriate options. Also, you want to be aware that when you mapping fields, there's certain field types that are allowed and certain that are not. So for example, a type, uh, it should be either message, disclaimer, join or leave. Uh, same thing for importance, normal or high, 
uh, and so on. So you definitely want to read this at least briefly and have some understanding of what the field types that are supported versus that are not. And this way, when you perform a conversion, you are making sure you're putting good data into the RSMF file. So hopefully this video answers most of the questions you had. If you want to play with this software on your own and experiment, you can do it completely for free. You can go to my website, software, message crawler, and the download that does not include a license is completely free. You can just add it to your card and then go to checkout section and download it. It will look like it wants a credit card number. It does not. I'm just using Squarespace for hosting, so I don't have a control of how the checkout appears. But if it is all zero for the price, then you'll be able to download this for free. The only limitation um, demo version has, it's not going to process all the data. It will replace some text messages with the word demo. But you will be able to process that files, export them out, load them with processing and put them on relativity and see how they look. You will be able to test the entire process so you know if this application is for you or not. Thank you guys for watching. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me through my website, uh, send me an email or on social media.